Welcome to our Bible study. We're currently studying discipleship. Uh, today we want to look at the book of Acts chapter number 8 verses 26 through 39. Discipleship thus far we have defined as our responsibility and accountability to learn what God requires of us and then to be obedient. A disciple is a learner, a student, a follower. A disciple is one who is disciplined, one who is of sound mind, sober, and thoughtful analysis. We have established two basic foundations that we are building upon thus far in our study of discipleship. Number one, uh, that one must be teachable. The disciple must be teachable, have a willingness to receive instruction. That means that we acknowledge that there are things that we don't know that we need to know. Uh, we use as our background uh, for that uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 2, when Jesus sat down uh, upon the mountain and began to teach the multitude. And then we also uh, built upon the fact the importance of hearing, understanding, and obeying the word of God. We use as our basis there Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. To be teachable uh, means that uh, we open ourselves to be uh, instructed of the Lord. Uh, but it is important that once the lesson is taught, that we hear it, that we understand it, that we obey it. Uh, we dealt with the hearing part that we must be attentive to not be distracted, uh, but to be attentive to the instruction of God's word and that we should regularly, routinely read God's word to study the word, whether corporately in what we consider worship service or church school or whatever teaching setting uh, that we are in corporately, but also our individual study. Well, then as we then segue from our individual study, uh, which is important, systematically, routinely, regularly reading the Word of God. But today we want to focus then on that part of reading where we also gain understanding from our reading. So the book of Acts chapter number 8 verse 26 says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Esaias the prophet, then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself, or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So we see in this passage, we have a eunuch, an Ethiopian eunuch, 
who is in the employ of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. However, he has come to Jerusalem to worship. And so he is what we would consider to be a Jewish proselyte. He has uh, accepted the God of the Old Testament, and he is a worshiper of the God of the Old Testament. And thus, he has a copy of the writing of the prophet Isaiah. He is there reading in his chariot, Isaiah. The Holy Spirit then uh, impresses upon Philip to go and join himself to that eunuch. Well, when Philip gets there, he sees that the eunuch is reading God's word. And we find that in verse number 30, that Philip heard him read Isaiah and hearing him ask the question, do you understand what you're reading? That's a fundamental question. We must always seek understanding proper to get proper understanding when we are reading God's word. If there is something that we don't understand, then we have to rely upon the Spirit of the Lord to help us to understand. In this case, the Spirit of the Lord sends Philip there to give assistance to this Ethiopian eunuch. And when Philip asks the question, the eunuch responds, how can I except some man should guide me? So clearly he was reading something that he did not have clarity of understanding and he needed help. So this goes back then to one of the things that uh, we have touched on thus far, and that is to be teachable. Uh, Philip uh, offers to give assistance, but clearly the, the eunuch accepts the fact that he needs the help. He says, how can I accept some man should guide me? So then Philip had the ability to help because Philip had greater awareness and understanding of the fullness of the scriptures. And so he was able to uh, show the Ethiopian that uh, the passage that he was reading referred to Jesus Christ and how that Jesus Christ had come and had been crucified, dead and buried and risen, ascended to heaven, soon to return. And thus the eunuch could receive salvation through Jesus Christ. Uh, the eunuch says, I believe and desire to be baptized. And so clearly he gained understanding for the scripture says this, he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Amen. That he would come up and sit with him. He invited Philip, help me, teach me. That is the sign of a disciple, one who is teachable, one who recognizes that when I come upon that which I don't understand, that I will seek understanding. God will then provide that understanding. In this instance, he provided Philip. God will, in whatever your situation is, enable you to gain understanding, either by utilizing someone else who can help expound to you the scripture or the Holy Spirit directly giving you understanding as you pray about it. But however God chooses to do it, God will do it. He will help to give you understanding. So thank you for joining us for this Bible study today. We will continue to build on discipleship the importance of being teachable, the importance of hearing the word, the importance of understanding the word of God. God bless you and God keep his eye prayer.